What about watercolor pencils? They are a great tool to carry with you when you are urban sketching. You need only a limited color palette and you can achieve a lot of different things with watercolor pencils. This is one of the series of seven mediums for urban sketching. Your color selection will depend on where you are going to travel. Some countries have beautiful blue skies and you will need this blue to convey the sun and the really gorgeous color of the sky in the south. Some other countries will have more muted colors and are you going to paint more landscapes or more buildings? Just a limited color palette will do everything you need. Talking about limited color palette, I took with me only those eight pencils and my sketchbook and of course a water brush because you would need it if you want to dilute the watercolor pencil. And this is all the things you can achieve with just those eight colors like this, for example. And what's interesting is you can keep the visible lines and also dilute some parts. Like this one, for example, it's a drawing made with a fountain pen and then a bit of watercolor pencil on top. And here everything is done with the pencils. And I have left the visible marks. A lot of mailboxes, it was really fun. It was the French island in the Caribbean Sea. I want to show you step by step how to do two different buildings with watercolor pencils and the one I'm using are Derwent Inktense. It's a box of 36 colors. It's a lot, but then you can get a lot of muted and nice colors that you will use. Just look at the ones that are used. Most important thing is swatch your pencils because they don't look like the paint on the pencil by itself. When I'm using colored pencils, watercolor pencils, I like to do a sketch before working. And it can be done directly with a fountain pen or a regular pen, or it can be also a sketch with a watercolor pencil. Because I like that the sketch by itself will disappear inside the final product. But you have to think carefully of the color of the sketch because it will blend in everything. So it's important that you take a minute or two to look at the overall color and decide which one is really interesting to use in your sketch. The sketch can be just construction line and more important perspective lines, or it can be really detailed with everything drawn from the initial sketch. It's just up to you how much information do you need before going into the coloring part. And also you can draw directly with a fountain pen or a pen and this is a good thing because whatever you place on top with watercolor pencil you will still have sharp crisp dark lines under your colors and this is really cool with watercolor pencil. I'm not really precious about uh, perspective. I like a bit of wonky lines so I like to go quick and fast because most of the time you are in the streets and you don't really have time to sit and draw an um, actual vanishing point outside of your sketchbook. So I have learned to make very, very rough sketches. And then you can skip directly to the coloring part. And for this particular drawing, I have drawn and used the color at the same time, meaning I thought as the stone was beige, I could as well draw directly with a beige uh, pencil and then switch the color depending on if it's dark or not. So basically it's not exactly a sketch, it's directly coloring. But for this other one, I went for a full complete sketch and then filled everything inside with the color, which is a different approach. It really depends on how you see the things and how complicated is the building or the landscape that you are drawing. And this is just one of the seven mediums I use for urban sketching. And if you want to learn more, check the description of the video and you can find more about the other mediums.
This house was pale pink in the facade and I think maybe I have applied a bit too much pigment on my paper because the paper has a rough texture so it's lifting up a lot of the pencil and I wanted to apply water right away just to see how dark it is and how light I should go when applying my pencil. And now that I see it's very, very dark, I need to apply very light touches of pink, even if it's way darker than I thought. But you can still do a bit of white on top of it because you have a white colored pencil in the box too. The good thing with watercolor pencil is you can really dose the amount of pigment and when you have filled everything with your pencil, you can go on top with a water brush and give it a go. The only thing is you want to be careful not to touch the color next to it or you will get a muddy color unless this is what you want. So you can have a yellow pencil, add the blue on top of it and you get green, obviously. So you have to know your color theory to be able to take the most out of watercolor pencils. And also you can scrub or rub gently with a brush just to lift up the pigments or you can go very very watery until you get something that is completely flat and interesting as you like or leave a bit of texture. I like to leave a bit of texture especially in buildings. It conveys the age of the building because sometimes the colors are not really clean. You can get the best of both worlds, the flat surface with the pigments diluted in water or leave the individual marks with uh, some brush strokes, <laughs> some pencil strokes and show, for example, the leaves. It's really cool. You can do whatever you want. When you want a large surface of color for the sky, for example, and you want to be sure that everything has the same intensity, the same saturation, you can, of course, rub your pencil directly on the paper, but a better way is to use a granulated surface. This is a palette that is designed just for that, but you can use uh, anything that is a bit grainy. You will rub your pencil on top of it and add a lot of water. Look at how much water I add and dilute it a bit because the sky will be really strong. And then you can apply a large surface of blue paint. This is really handy. Well, I must admit that taking this palette with you on the field is maybe not that handy. So I would keep that just for the studio, but it can be a good thing to finish your drawings when you're back home anyway. Wait a minute, is it helpful? Do you learn something? I hope you do. And if you do, please boop the like button so YouTube can spread the video across YouTube. Does it make sense? Well, you get the idea. Or oh, write a comment, it's even better. Are you using other mediums for urban sketching? Let me know and we can discuss about it. At this stage, you should have finished the coloring part and maybe it's time to move. Maybe you are with someone and he's a bit fed up that you are drawing for so long and you can't finish at home. So take a reference image of what you were painting and finish home if you need to. You could do this directly with a pencil by itself, a watercolor pencil. Just sharpen it very well so you can have th thin lines. Just don't add water on top of it or you will lose the sharp lines. 
or you can use any kind of pen, fountain pen, brush pen, whatever you have that will make those sharp lines and add all the details and finishing touches that will bring everything to life. I use two techniques. One is to rub a bit of pigment on the paper and it works well if you have a texture on your paper. Have a light hand because you don't want a dark color, especially for this building, which is very light. And you can mix different colors to have a more interesting thing. And then add a spritz of water on top of it. And look at that. It will give a very cool texture. Or you can do this with a regular pencil and you can also adjust the amount of pigment once you have added the water. In this building, the left side is in the shadow, so it should be darker than the right side, but I have applied the same amount of pigment. So what I can do is lift up the pigment once it's wet by rubbing my brush on top of the pigments and erasing it, the pigment on a towel next to me and lift up just like you would do with regular watercolor painting. And at the end, you have something that is light and that shows a difference of sun and shadow. Did you like it? I love this technique. It's so versatile. You can do a lot of things. And now you can go watch this video with another medium for urban sketching because I'm pretty sure you need a lot of ideas for your upcoming travel. See you there.